Well, good morning. Listen, I want to greet you in the, in the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome, welcome you to the Grace Experience with Grace Hill Church and Dr. Bell Carper. Look, the word of the Lord says in the 95th Psalm, verses 1 and 2, it, said, it reads as this, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. See, right now you ought to begin to just praise the Lord. Just create your own atmosphere. Just begin to just sing that new song because the day has not been promised. Some did not see this day, but you have been blessed to see this day. God has given you the activity of your limbs, the, the breath in your body. See, he's even, see, some, some things may have gone come against you this week that may have driven some people off, off their kilter. But see, because you serve an all-knowing and all-powerful God, you should just praise him. See, the devil gets conflicted when we praise even through our, through our circumstances and our trials. So praise him right now and create your own atmosphere and come into his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise. This has been your call to worship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, how we bless you today, Lord God, and we just thank you just for who you are, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, those known and unknown, Lord God. Lord God, and that you move in our lives like never before, Father God. We lift up now, Lord God, this worship experience to you, Lord God, and we ask that you will have your way, Lord God. We come against distraction, Lord God. We come against anxieties and in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and we ask, Lord God, that you be pleased with our worship this morning, Lord God. But those that are in attendance, Lord God, we ask that you meet them at that point of need, Lord God, and let something be said or done throughout this worship, throughout this experience, Lord God, that they will be touched, Lord God, that they will be the better for Lord God, but you will get the glory, Lord God. Touch each and every one of us, Lord God, from the top of our heads, Lord God, to the soles of our feet, Lord God. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let us go higher with our exaltation with Elder Fuller. Good Praise the Lord, everybody. Our exaltation scripture this morning is coming from James 1 through 5. And it reads, to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to us. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord is blessed. Here the scripture is telling us that during the times of trials, even when this new wave is approaching us, this new variant wave that's approaching us, that we have to count it all joy. Because in, but in order to count it all joy, saints, we have to approach times like these with the right attitude. We have to approach times like these seeking the wisdom from God. You know, Oprah Winfrey once said that we can turn our wounds into wisdom. So I want to remind us today that anything that comes up against us or anything that we're facing, we have to seek the wisdom of God because we're not able to do it alone. This has been your exhortation. I pray that something was said or done that will encourage you and lift up your walk with Christ. We're going to go higher at this time with our music ministry. Oh, 
Sunday here at the Grace Hill Church, our first of the month uh, prayer. We want to do it right now. Every first Sunday of the month, we like to pray with you. Most gracious and eternal master, how we thank and we praise you, Lord God, for this day. For this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it, oh God. God, we just thank you for being such a great God, such an amazing God and the only God, the only wise God. God, you are so awesome in every way and everything that you do. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you will set the, set the pace for this month, Lord God, whatever it is that you will have us to do, God. God, set our agenda and Lord set our hearts toward you Lord God that we will do the work uh, that you will have us to do God that we will meet those folks that we need to meet Lord God that those who are becoming a part of not only the kingdom but the Grace Hill Church Lord God that they are coming in this month and we are acknowledging them Lord how we thank you, Lord God, for healing the sick this morning. We pray especially for Papa Wynn, Lord God, that you will just touch his body from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord God. Give the doctors and the nurses the wisdom and the wherewithal that they need, God, to be able to attend to him and his physical need. And Lord, we just ask that his spirit, man, God, will arise even now, Lord God, to speak to this circumstance and to speak to this situation today, God. We come putting our faith together, Lord God, to pray against this thing we call COVID-19. Lord God, no matter the variant, no matter what it is, Lord God, you're able. So we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. Give us the wisdom and let us walk in wisdom today, Lord God. We pray for ministries everywhere under the sound of your voice, Lord. 
those who are standing in, in need of healing, Lord God, that your healing power and authority will arrest us like never before. Those who have been experiencing lack, Lord God, we come against lack for you are Jireh. You are God and we stand on your word today, Lord God. Lord, while I am remiss in knowing all of the needs of those for whom are under the sound of my voice today, God, for those who are under heaven today, God, I ask of you right now that you will take care of their needs. You have clothed the birds, Lord God, and fed the birds and the birds of the air. Don't worry about what they're going to eat on tomorrow. So we know, God, that your hand of mercy that is extended upon us is a great hand. And for that, we are grateful. Thank you for divine protection even now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to go right into our offering time. As we're going into offering time, we want to welcome you to August 1st. It is the eighth month. And guess what? We are heavily into our reset. This is church anniversary month. As we go into offering, you can download that app. You can download the Givelify app and you can give today. We are streaming live here on YouTube today. And so we thank you for being with us. Share it to your other social media outlets so that people know that we are here and that we are praising the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And so we ask of you today that you will share the broadcast. And right as we go into the offering, we want you to give, give in faith. And we want to thank you for every contribution, every seed that you are continuing to give to the ministry. Thank you for those pastoral compensation seeds that you're sowing into my life. I'm telling you, they're going a long way. And I am so appreciative for everything that you have sown for not just your tangible seeds, but your prayers. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for looking out for me. And I thank you, especially in the time of transition, you have to have people who are praying and seeing and supporting the vision. So thanks to all of you who continue to see and support the vision of the house. God is certainly moving by his spirit and he is moving by his power divine. And so we ask that you will give according to Malachi, that you will bring the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in the house of the Lord. There is a way that we do this. We do it with a heart of cheerfulness. And so as you give today, I'm going to pray in just a second. As you give today, we want you to give in faith. Most gracious and eternal master, we thank you for every seed that is being sown even now. You give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And we don't eat our seeds, but we sow them into what we call good ground. We have declared this place. We prayed over this altar, even this week, Lord God, that the place where I now stand, God, is a holy place. It is a place, Lord God, where when we sow our seeds, Lord God, those who are sowing in faith at home, who are given from a cheerful heart, God, we ask that you meet every need because you're a need meeting God. But we don't give just out of need or necessity, Lord God, but we give because it's just the right thing to do out of our obedience, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us go now into our announcements to see what our GHC news is all about.
Well, here we are, and we are ready for the word. How many of you are ready for the word of the Lord? We want to go right into our belief statement, which says, we believe because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, we have a legacy of love, grace to do greater works, and faith to see the unseen hand of God at work. Amen. Let us govern ourselves according to those announcements. You can see them, and, and they are on our Facebook page. So go to our Facebook page at Grace Hill Church, um, and you can see the announcements there like our Facebook page, and you'll be able to know that when we're sending announcements out or anything like that. And so go to our Facebook page, Grace Hill Church, like our page, and you can keep up with what's going on here at Grace Hill Church. You can also go to our website at www.gracehillchurchshreveport.org for more details about what's happening in the ministry. Those of you who are joining us first, by, uh, the first time today by YouTube, go ahead and there's gonna be a button that tells you to click and subscribe, click and subscribe to the page. And so we want you to do that anytime that we are on, then it will give you a notification that we're on and you won't forget about that we are here. Well, it's first Sunday and it's Holy Communion, but right before we go into Holy Communion, I wanna go into the word of the Lord. This month, we're talking about reset. We're talking about reset. It's church anniversary. And we're talking about it's the reset. We're in year four. We're re-examining, re-imagining, and we are re thinking and we are rethinking. Most gracious and eternal master, thank you for being in this place today, Lord. We ask that as we go into the word, Lord God, that this word will get into our hearts. It will germinate there, take root, and that we will see the harvest of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I want you to go to Psalm, the 27th chapter, and our focus scripture is going to be verses 13 and 14. That's Psalm, the 27th chapter, Psalm, the 27th chapter, verses 13 and 14 are our focus scriptures. So as you focus throughout this week on how you're going to reset, I really want you to look at these particular scriptures and really focus in on these scriptures to see how it is that we're going to reset and really step into season eight. We preached about season eight. We've talked about season eight. We've even declared that this is the year of the reset, but the time has come indeed that now we are focused and we are in our season eight. We are focused and now we are in our season eight. So how are you stepping into season eight? Somebody th may have thought that the red carpet was going to be laid out for them, or maybe the fireworks that you know that are synonymous to July the 4th are not popping off and going off everywhere. So how then are we? Uh, is, is it time, Lord? Because I don't see something extravagant happen. But I want to remind you this morning that nothing extravagant has to happen for there to be a transition in your life. Nothing extravagant has to happen in order for God to be in what's going on in your life. Here in Psalm the 27th chapter verses 13 and 14 it says, I had fainted. I had already fainted. It was already done with I had fainted unless, but here's here's a contradiction to it, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Because every now and then, Brother Leon, our heart tends to wax weak. Wait, and then it says this, I say, you got to listen to what I'm saying on the Lord. I'll read it again. I had fainted. I had already given up. I had already failed. Anytime in your life that you are not being strengthened and you are not believing the word of God, contrary to what your atmosphere may look like, you have already fainted. And what it means to have already fainted means that I've already given up. So no matter what I do from this point on, if I don't change my conversation, if I don't change some of my relationships, if I don't change what I'm doing, then I've already fainted. Why? Because I have failed to believe the word of the Lord unless I had believed. So what I've got to do to counteract my fainting is it says that I've got to believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Tell somebody I'm going to see it. I got to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, uh, Minister Hill, I'm not going to wait till I die. I know that eternity is going to be great. Come on here, somebody. I know that there's, 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 there's streets that are paved. They say are, are streets not necessarily paved, but streets that are of gold. I know that, 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 that the gates got all these jewels in them. And I know that it's going to be a wonderful time. Why? Because we're going to be in the presence of the Lord, number one. It will be daytime and every night. Why? Because of the splendor of his glory. Yeah. 
I understand that and boy am I looking to that great getting up morning but nonetheless while I am here and while the Lord has me here I got to declare and I got to decree and I got to believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord right here in the land of the living when I talk about the land of the living I know that I'm going to live over there but while I'm right here and while I'm living right here in my assignment, while I'm right here in the place where God has me, I've got to declare that I'm going to see something even when what I'm looking at is not what I want to see. Is anybody being encouraged this morning? And the reason that I know that the psalmist, psalmist was not looking at what, 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 what he had desired to see is because there is an emphatic um, uh, um, instruction that says, wait, hallelujah. It is an understood in grammar. It is understood that there is a now there whenever you see that there is there is a an emphatic or or a verb that says that in a sentence begins with the verb like uh and it says tells you to do something that says wait or it says pray or it says don't give up then it is understood what we call an understood you there in the text don't you miss you in the text this morning because it is not written in the text does not mean that you are not intended for the text it says wait on the lord who needs to wait on the Lord? You need to wait on the Lord. I need to wait on the Lord. We need to wait on the Lord. And how do I wait on the Lord? I don't wait on the Lord complaining. I don't wait on the Lord anticipating that it's not going to happen. I said to somebody yesterday, I said, I'm praying and I'm believing God for such and such to happen. Well, you know, I don't even worry about that anymore. I, 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 it's not going to happen. I just told you that I'm praying and I'm believing God that this is what's going to happen. So you're not the person that I need to pray That's with. Right. You're not the person that I'm coming in agreement with. It does not mean that I don't love you. It does not mean that I'm not for you. But I got to understand that this is spiritual business. And if you're not down in this thing to make sure that something wonderful is going to happen then I got to know that I got to move on it does not stop me from loving you it does not stop me from even praying for you but it means that I cannot waste my time here with you on this particular situation we spend so much time in our lives trying to make people feel good about themselves rather than doing what we need to do and having the blessings and the breakthrough yeah. anointing that we need to have why because we are catering to trauma in our life we are are catering to drama in our life we're catering to what's not going to happen we're catering to sin rather than sin but I know what the word of the Lord says and I choose to go with what the word of the Lord says yeah. and the word of the Lord says be of good courage it tells me to be of good courage and there's another understood you there who needs to be of good courage I need to be of good courage you need to be of good courage we need to be of good courage why because during this cycle of time that I gotta wait this time that I don't know it's extent that God has only God knows the extent of my weight then I've got to make sure that while I'm waiting and while the storms still come and while the drops still come and when bad news continues to come against me I got to learn how to stand and watch this I got to be of a good courage Joshua 1 the first chapter tells us it tells us around the 7th through the 10th verses it says be of good courage and it tells you don't look to the left come on here somebody don't look to the right because if you look to the sideline what I notice in the uh -huh. game is that the folks who are playing the game they ain't got time for sideline activity uh -huh. whether you are cheering for them or not they love a good audience but let me tell you what pandemic taught us that sometimes ain't gonna be nobody in the stand you got to learn how to to play the game even when there's nobody cheering you off. What it taught me about preaching that there may be people and may not be anybody in the sanctuary to say amen, but you've been called to preach when there are no amens. Yes. You've been called to preach when the seats yes. are empty, but God wants you to preach the word because there's uh, those who are hearing the word even when they are in their homes and yes. not in, come on here somebody, the sanctuary. you got to learn how to run on to see what the end already yes. is, but what it's going to be for you because your mind has not gravitated to what God has already done. Yes. So you got to be of good courage, saint, this morning. Can I preach and tell you th that he shall strengthen your heart? Yes. Am I preaching this morning? The Lord will strengthen your heart, yes. but you got to posture yourself and you got to position yourself that I don't care what the devil has said to me. Yes. I'm going to let the Lord strengthen. I, oh, I had an initial shock about that thing that brought me to the altar. That thing brought me down on my knees. That thing made me cry like a baby, but no Nonetheless, I thank God this morning.
morning that because I had sense enough to come to the altar, yes, I cried about it. Yes, I thought about all the bad things. I probably even Googled them too to see what was going to happen to me. But I found out to take what I found in Googling and I said, Lord, I'm going to pray over this, Lord God. I'm going to pray over that because I believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Watch this in the land of the living. It says, wait. Repeat again, wait, hallelujah. Why? Because just in case you forgot and the devil is coming against you, I got to tell you again because I want you to understand that you got to wait, hallelujah. Am I in season eight? Yes, I am in my season eight, but I got to wait. And it says, I say on the Lord. Why? Because in season seven, hallelujah. In season six, hallelujah. In season five, hallelujah. In season four, hallelujah. In season three, in season two, and in season one, I was just like a baby. You know, there were some things that came against me. Come on here, somebody. That, that, that I stepped out on my own and I crafted a miracle for myself. You see, I created my own way out only to find myself going back in all over again. But this time, I got I sense enough to know that the shortest thing to, for me to do, come on here, somebody, did you catch that? I said the shortest thing for me to do is wait on the Lord. I don't care how long it takes the Lord to come. If you were to talk to the woman that was on the ground and she was pressing and she was getting into the presence of God, shouldn't have been out of the house. They had said that she was unclean and all these things. She was spent out. She was exhausted. She was holistically speaking unwhole. Come on here, somebody. But nevertheless, she says, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That tells me that she was holistically spent. She had no money she had uh, she was exhausted in her spirit mentally i cannot imagine because socially she could not be around anybody but she says if i can but touch come on here somebody and i believe that there's somebody who's listening to me today that if you can but touch come on here the hem of his garment i want to tell you today that you will be made Oh, she says, I got to press my way because if I can just get to Jesus, everything is going to be all right. I'm spent out. I'm at my wit's end. Is there anybody this morning that you are at wit's end? But nonetheless, you're pressing into the presence of God. I want to talk to you this morning about there are goats out there that I found out fainting, fainting goats. And these fainting goats are a special type, type of goat. Thinking not strange that I'm looking up fainting and I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what can I say about fainting? And in my research, I come across these goats and they are actual animals, Pastor Crystal, but they faint. And they tell you that this is that 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 when they are walking in fear, can I preach this morning? That when 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 these goats are when they when they when they experience fear, and I think these they first originated in in Tennessee in the eighteen around the eighteen eighties, and this particular goat came, I think, from Scotland or somewhere of that uh, of that uh, of that er area. And when they brought them to 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 this area of Tennessee, the people were just kind of amazed by these goats because whenever someone would sneak up on them or whenever they they sensed fear, they would just topple over and people would think it was the most hilarious thing in the world to watch these things. Or some were stunned and said, what in the world just happened to that goat? Did that goat just suddenly die? That's a whole nother message because there are some things that fear has come to knock you out, but you can get back up again and the devil thinks that he has killed you and that he has blocked you, but you you can get back up again. What I love about these myotonic goats are these fainting goats. Myotonic meaning that their muscles get weak. I want to ask you this morning, this morning, how are you exercising your faith? These goats, they fall down, but then when time comes back, they get back up, hallelujah, and they stand back up. And, I, you know, though these goats in comparison to other goats may feel like they've got a problem, though these goats in comparison, in comparison to other goats may feel like their time is out. Come on here, somebody. Mm -hmm. These goats still continue to get back up. Can I encourage somebody today mm -hmm. that perhaps you fainted, but you got to learn how to get back up? Mm -hmm. Thinking not strange that in the hour in which we live, we tend to uh, refer to people who are good in their craft, you know, that's the goat of all. They, they are goat. They're the greatest of all times. Can I preach about the greatest of all times? Yeah. First of all, the greatest of all times. Can I give glory to God and say that Jesus is the greatest yeah. of all times? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that even yeah. the greatest of all times as we know them here in the earth can be pushed to the limit? 
Whether we excel at business, entertainment, preaching, and pastoring, our sports, you name it. There comes a time when we grow weary as the woman who crawled and says, I got an issue of blood, but I'm going to touch the one today that I need to touch. Mm -hmm. Then we tire out. There comes a time when we must consider a different strategy, church, and we have to go forward in a different way. It means that we have to unlock the routine and the ways that we used to do stuff, and we got to find a new way of how we're going to do it. If we're going to survive, no matter who we are and what we have done, we cannot compare with our incomparable God. Our God is impeccable. He's indescribable. He is immeasurable. In Isaiah 40, 12 and 13, and if you would write that down, Isaiah 40, 12 and 13, it says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and have meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in the valleys? I want to ask you this morning, just in case you didn't get it, how many of you can hold sand in your hand and know how much sand you got? Come on here. How many of us can measure the water in the hollow of our hands. How many of us can look and comprehend the dust of the earth in a measure and weigh the mountains, it says, in scales. Our God can pick up the mountains and he can put them right there on the scales and the scales are God himself. God can determine himself what the measurement is going to come out to be. It says here, who had directed and I'm actually doing Isaiah 40, 12 through 14. Uh, verse 13 says, who had directed the spirit of the Lord are being his counselor had taught him God does not need your advice won't this level the playing field for us it said who have directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor had taught him anything that means that God knows everything so anything that comes against the knowledge of God come on here then it, what does the, the scripture says we come against everything that comes against the knowledge of God you know we got to take those strongholds and pull them down right so whatever is coming against what you know in God you got to take that thing and pull it down and cause it to come into submission to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because none of us have been not able to direct the Spirit of the Lord nor be God's counselor. Verse 14 of Isaiah the 40th chapter says, with whom took he counsel and whom who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding. Who is it that can teach God? Who is it that can say, God, this is the way to go? Whenever we are in our prayers, we got to be careful telling God, God, I need you to go this way. God, no, no, no. The question is, God, which way will you have me to go today, God. What is it that you will have us to do? God, we got a plan, but God, we don't have to have the plan. God, God, we want the Jeremiah 29 and 11 special. You know the one uh, that you got on the menu. God, that's the one that we want, God. We're looking, you know how you pull up to the drive through window and you're like, what do I have a taste for today? I got a taste. Tell your neighbor, I got a taste for God. Whatever it is that God is doing in this season, that's what I want to see. What does the scripture say? It says, oh, taste and see see that who the Lord he is good so y'all in season eight I got a new taste and that taste is God I got a taste for God as we see here our God is impeccable you heard me say he's indescribable you heard me say ultimately he is incomparable none as we can see in Isaiah the 40th chapter can compare to our God I want to talk about a few steps that can help you reset and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living for we said verse 13 says I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living then it says wait on the Lord be of good courage. Amen. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Way I say on the Lord. The first thing that I want you to write down is this race. Glory to God. This race. I'm going to talk about the race. I'm going to talk about recognizing. And I'm going to talk and I'm going to tell you how that you can move on to resigning. Only that you can be reset. So re the race. I must know first that it's my race. Pastor Crystal, I ain't got no business running your race. 
And the problem with us, the reason that we're not getting ahead, but we are getting to a finish line and we got this false hope of victory is because guess what? I hate to tell you, but you ran somebody else's race. You too tired for the race that God put out there for you to run. Why? Because you were too busy running in a race that God didn't enter you in. You got to understand to run the race that God has set before you. There are seasonal races. There are races that you will run this race in this season, but you got to understand when that season is up and when you are in a new category and when you are no longer for that but God's got you for this mm -hmm. so the first thing you got to do is understand your race you don't have any business running anybody else's race I can't run your race I must run the race that has been set before me you need scripture on that first Corinthians 9 26 through 27 says I therefore so run not as uncertainly I ain't out there just running because somebody said to run yeah, a race right. but I, I i am certain that the race that i'm running come on here somebody yes. that the, i'm a winner in this race before i even take the first step why because he called me more than a conqueror so i already know if i'm running in the right race that i'm a winner in that one yes. and too many people are trying to win in a race that's not their race mm -hmm. you're trying to win in a profession that God ain't told you to be in. You're trying to win by doing something that God didn't tell you to do. The reason you're not winning and the other folks are passing you by who just started yesterday is because it's their race, but it's not yours. He says, I therefore so not, I therefore so run not as uncertainly, uh, so fight I not as the one that beateth the air. So I'm not just out here doing something just to be doing it. I'm not just beating in the air. I'm not just having a mission work and not feeding. Come on here, somebody, anybody yeah. that needs it. I'm not feeding folks that I already got, but they're yeah. greedy. But I'm looking for, and I'm saying, God, where is the need? And wherever you send us, Lord God, that's where we're going. Yeah. But I keep under my body and bring into subjection. You got to pull your body over sometimes. Yes. And you got to tell your body, you got to get under submission with the Holy Spirit. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, when I have told others that Jesus is Lord, mm -hmm. I myself should be a castaway. Grace Hill Church, we don't want to do the work of the Lord. And then when we're done doing the work, we ourselves are unsaved. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we've gone about and routine beating the air. We ran somebody else's race. We ran the church down the street race. And mm -hmm. them saying, God, what's the vision for this house? How will you have us to do it that it will bring you glory, Lord God? I have to know that I'm in the right race if I expect to win. Why? Because God has me to be a winner of that race and not the race that I want to run. Yes. That's the marriage that you're in that God didn't tell you to be in. That's the wrong race. That relationship that you are in and you know God is telling you to get out of that relationship, but you're still stuck in the relationship. Why? Because you're too stubborn to let go and you're afraid of looking like a failure. Well, let me tell you, you're gonna, you're, you, you, you've you already failed by being in the wrong race that God doesn't want you to be in. The second thing I want you to do is recognize now that you have you realize and you understand what your race is. You got to recognize. You got to know when it's time to make a move. You got to know when it's time to pivot. Recognize your contributions and understand your withdrawals, both to and in, both to you and unto others. What do I mean by that? You got to know what you're contributing and what you're giving, and you got to know what people are taking away from you. God said something to me this morning. I'm going to tell you in a minute that blessed my soul and I hope it blesses yours. I know if it was if it was for me, if it's not for you, but I think it's for you, too. And it said we got to know what we are having contributed to us as well. So know what I'm giving out and know what's coming into me, because there has to be a balance and an equilibrium at least. But we serve the God of Ephesians 3.20 that wants to do exceeding a bundle above all that we ask or think. So we should never be depleted when we're doing it God's way. Why? Because if God is giving me overflow, then when I'm doing what God tells me to do, I should never. God will never deplete you. Yes. Watch this. It says there has to be a balance if you don't want a depletion. What God gave me this morning was depletion is not completion. You need to write that one. Depletion is not completion. Why did the Holy Spirit tell me that? Because we're coming to the end of something and we're thinking we're done and we're not done at all. We are just tired and we need to be refueled. Yes. Well, I'm done with that. No, you're not done with that. You, you mishandled that. 
You mishandled it. And God has said, I'm going to refuel you so that you can get back up and you can do what you need to do. Well, I'm done with that season. I'm not going to preach anymore. No, you're depleted because you gave out more than what you were taking in. You didn't rest and you didn't receive the word of God. So now you're preached out because you have not set out in front of anybody else to let them pour what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you. So you think your days of pastoring and preaching are over. No, baby, you just got started. You need to be refueled. Depletion is not completion. And some of you are hanging up your work clothes and your boots way too fast. Now, for me, it's preaching. For you, what is it? You need to identify your race. And you need to know when you're at the halfway mark and you just need to see. One of the things they do put on the sideline, can I tell you? They have breaks. And what they'll put on the sideline is they have, you know, and all the companies love it. Why? Because Gatorade gets to do what? They get to advertise. And they have these stations that just in case, come on here, y'all, yes. along the way, you get tired. They also have these folks who are in sports medicine on hand. Yes. And just in case you fall, you hurt yourself or you suffer an injury, they're going to work on you on the sideline so that you can get back in the race. You need to learn when to pull over sometime and say, Lord, I need you to restore to me the joy of your salvation. Depletion is not completion. It is an interruption to your success. And if you are planning to be successful, you got to get back up again. When we are depleted, we often feel like we are done, like we have completed an assignment. This is not the case, and you must discern the difference. We see the courageous decision of Olympia gymnast. Can I talk about it? Simone Biles. You have to know what decision you need to make for you, because whatever decision you make for you, Pastor, is going to be the decision that you make for Grace Hill. Because if you're not well, then you can't preach. If you're not preach, how then shall they hear? Yes, there are other pre preachers here, but is it that they're preaching because God's giving them a call and they need to preach and they need to support the ministry? Or is it because you have not taken care of yourself? The preacher's praying God to be able to give me an opportunity to go and retreat and to break so that I can continue to do this work. Not because I've fallen sick in my body, because I failed to work on myself when it was appropriate time to rest and to do what I need to do. How are you doing with your family? How are you doing with yourself? How are you doing with your children? Are you taking that appropriate time to step back and step into the presence of God? I came in this week. And the first, the Lord told me, he says, the first thing I want you to do in entering the building is put everything down, hit the altar, and I want you to turn toward the vision and pray the vision. And I need you to spend some time at the altar before you do anything. I looked up at the clock and he says, what are you doing? What are you doing? You'll pray as long as I want you to pray. But because I've been on the timeline of man for so long, and because I've had to run out of my office and run to a bathroom, or run out to the parking lot. Come on here, y'all. Miss a lunch break. Miss a 15 minute lunch because I need to walk and I need to pray and I need to fit God in my schedule. God says, I need to get you accustomed to what I'm doing in season eight. You're not you still trying to bring a season seven mentality over to a season eight place. But I need you on your face. I need you praying for the people of God. That's your first priority. Not to jump to what do we need to do? How do I need to do this? No. No, no, no. Before you do anything, I need to speak to you because I'm going to tell you what your schedule for the day is. That's how God works. Simone Biles didn't go to the Olympics to become a winner. She was at the Olympics because she is a winner. There are some things that God is going to call you to. And you're thinking, I'm coming here and this is my opportunity to become this. This is my opportunity. No, no, no. God says, because you already are who I see you as. That's why you are here. And you are here to answer somebody's question. Let me tell you, you're not a problem. Say, I am an answer. I am an answer. God is, is answering your, he's, he's answering somebody's problems and he, while he's answering your questions at the same time. Simone Biles didn't go to the Olympics just to become a winner. She was a winner when she got there. That's why she was invited. In the Olympics of life, we must know that we are already winners. No matter the category of our trials and challenges, we still must believe that the same coach, the same one, the same counselor that got us through our last circumstance and situation, that he is still well able. We must train for them through prayer and exercise faith. We must practice our faith and we must pray. 
When tempted to complain, we must speak victory. Romans 8 and 28 says, we know that these things work for us. Romans 8 and 37 says, we're more than conquerors. We're not what we feel, but we are what we know. Yes. It's not what you feel to be true. It's what you know to be true. Yes. The last R that I want to give you before we reset today is to resign. <laughs> to resign. Now, this is the scary one. I, 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 I have been for years a redesigned person. You could give me something that was broken and I could take it and I could redesign it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't know how redesign was picking in here, but I see now. And I would take it and I would try to redesign it. But I'm going to tell you that's going to come a time that you won't have the thread to sew that thing back up again. There's going to come a time that you're going to run out of the yarn, the wire, the tape that it took to patch it up again. Why? Because God is not providing you the tools anymore to be able to redesign that thing. God will only allow you to redesign a thing over and over again because it is only God that can make an old thing new. He says, behold, I want to do a new thing. You still try to redesign the old thing. But I need you to resign to the old way of thinking. I need you to resign to the old way of doing it the way that you did it. <laughs> I had to resign my job, y'all. I had to resign my job. I still got bills. All hell broke loose on Monday. <laughs> Let me tell you. And look, I, 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 I went to the doctor Monday. I went to the doctor Wednesday. I went to the doctor Friday. And this Wednesday, I'm going back to the doctor. And the next Wednesday, I'm going back to the doctor. All hell broke loose. I came, whew, and I laid on the altar Wednesday. Because that devil thought that he had me. But then... I almost fainted. I had I had fainted, but I had to come back to myself and say, but what do you believe? What do you believe? I had to pull out the big dogs and say, I need you to go and pray like never before. Because I had to resign to those feelings and I couldn't let those feelings be what I was going to wake up with in the next day. Leslie Locko resigned as the dean of the Spitzer School of Architecture at the City College of New York. I hope I'm saying that right. Coming from South Africa, she was not prepared for the way that black people, especially black women, were going to be treated. She could not use what she didn't have enough to process and to deflect her experience. But the lack of respect and empathy caught her off guard. And sometimes in your life, you're going to be caught off guard. She made a statement, and her statement is, I suppose I'd say in the end that my resignation was a profound act of self-preservation. You got to understand when it's time to go, to leave those thoughts, resign from thoughts. Everybody can't resign from their job. You better make sure God's telling you to do it because only God provides. But there then comes the need to reset so that means I got to reset my mind. I told you when I would come in here, what would I do? I'm straight to the office and my mindset is every day, every minute. I'm sitting there. Okay, you need to work on the, the video. You need to work on this. You need to work on that. You need to do this because why? I was so accustomed to every single solitary minute of my day being filled with the test, 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 test. And Minister Hill came in one day and he said, you know, and through the conversation, he helped me out to something that he solidified with my spirit. He says, and we were talking about the cell phone and how that the cell phone causes sometimes trauma to us. Why? Because the last time I got a call, it was something devastating. And the more that that happens over and over again, now somebody's calling me to be a blessing to me. And I can't hear the call. Why? Because I got PTSD from all the bad calls. I was mopping and I was cleaning and I was going on and had my music on. And at the door, there was a knock. And Sister Tondra, bless her soul, was knocking, trying to get in. Then she called 
And I said, who could be calling on my cell phone? They didn't call the church phone. So I answered the phone and it was her. She says, Pastor, I'm outside. She wanted to bless me with a seed. But the trauma of somebody wants me in these hours of the day <laughs> almost got me into an attitude of what could this be at this point of the day? Because that point, and I had to go back and see what the issue, because anytime my phone rang at that point of the day, it was somebody that was not pouring into me, but was needing something from me. But God turned that thing around and God said, I'm going to show you how I'm doing things in this season. I, I, I was devastated. And I said, God, I said, there are a couple of things that I need now. I, I, I didn't I didn't plan to do co-pays all week. And she came to the door with the seed. God says, don't tell me that I'm not God. Mm -hmm. Don't don't tell me who, what I'm not. I need you <coughs> to trust me. I'm going to preach a, a sermon called True Trust. <laughs> and when I preach on true trust, you're going to understand what it means to truly trust God. So we have to reset. God says, I need you resetting your mind. I need you to reset what it looks like. I need you to reset. Because if you're going to preach to these people, my people, in season eight, then you got to trust me. So God needs us to reset our hearts. Reset the way we do things, reset our minds, that it will bring ultimate glory to him. Reset the way that we do things so that we can last long enough. We're not depleted. We're not calling this quits. Why? Because Satan wants you to give up. But you can't let the devil cause you to give up and give out. Father, right now in the name.